Welcome to your next video in App and Game Design 1. This video is going to show you how to create your second app, which is going to be a portfolio app. So we have our portfolio here that you can get to, and I have a short link for me. This is my example portfolio. So we have this portfolio page that someone can get to by going to the web, where we're going to make an app that someone can install on their phone, and it's going to show us our home page and the apps and my projects and reflections and we're going to do that using something called the web viewer. So I'm going to go back to the class page. I'm going to leave this open because we're going to need it. So all the instructions is always is on your page. So I'm going to come over here to my student portal. Make sure you're signed in. Click on App Design 1. And I'm going to scroll to the very bottom. I'm going to go to my first grading term. Click on that. And you can see we've previously completed our first two apps, was the soundboard and the original soundboard that you've completed and turned in. Now we're working on my portfolio app, Web Viewer. So we're going to introduce you to a new component, a Web Viewer. Web Viewer is think of it of like putting a browser inside of an app. So if I wanted to put Chrome inside of an app, that way they don't have to go outside of my app. I can actually embed a browser inside of it. So you can see, here's the page. I give you an outline. This is what we're going to build. We're going to design it first, and we'll code it. I'll tell you what to call the new project. I give you some icons that you're going to need. These are from the Google Standard Library. Um, then I give you an example of the assignment, how it's going to look. So you can see the icons that you're going to use, how this is going to be set up. And then this is the video that you're currently watching. I give you the rubric. Always, always, always check the rubric. Because this is how I'm going to grade you. So if I'm giving you how I'm going to grade you, you should get an A on every single app. You should get an A in the class. This is the steps to actually turn it in. But let's go ahead and build this. So I want to open up App Inventor. I remember I have the link here. I also give you the shortcut link there. And make sure you're signed in. If you're Gantech, you can see it's going to say, hey, sign in with your account. I'm signing in with mine. I'm going to go ahead and put allow for the next 30 days. So I don't have to do that every time. App Inventor is going to open up. It's going to open up to your previous project. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. That's the release notes. Remember, App Inventor constantly gets updated every month, month and a half. And this is what we're going to try to design. This is the final product. And I can zoom in some so you can see. You can see we have our navigation bar where people can touch these. And they're going to go to different points. So when they click on Home, you're going to see this home page. Let's put this in there. When they click on this phone, that's going to represent clicking on this link, and it's going to show our apps pages. All right? Clicking on portfolio is going to show our projects pages. And then clicking on my files is going to show this link, my link, my files. Clicking on this person talking is going to be my reflections link. And then clicking on substitute is going to be the substitute days link. And you can see we have all these other links. Currently, if we look underneath my apps, you could see first grading term, and we created that app in the original port. So we want to recreate this. Again, following the class page, if I scroll down, I give you this icon here, and I'm actually going to close up like that, but I'm going to right click and open it in a new tab. The reason I give you this, if I blow it up, I give you all the components. I give you how to rename them. A part of your portfolio grade is renaming them correctly. So if I give you this entire App Inventor screen with the names, with the components I'm using, you should have the exact same thing. So I'm going to use this as a guide. You can see right here it says create a new project. So like project, my portfolio app. So let's go ahead in here, go to project, start a new project, my portfolio app. And I click OK. So here, remember first step whenever we create an app, 
This says screen one here. We don't want it to say screen one. We want it to say the name of the app. We need to customize our properties for our entire app. And that's done by customizing the properties for screen one. So I can customize app name. This is what's seen on your phone. For example, when I come to my app gallery here, all these, the text down here shows up is what is inside of app name. So I don't want that to say my portfolio app. I want it to actually say who it is. Jamie Gantz portfolio. So that's what's going to show up as a text. And come down, I can change the background, the background image, this close screen animation. Let's say I want it to fade whenever someone closes my app. The icon. The icon is this image that shows up um, that goes along with your app when it's installed. So for the icon, we want it to be a picture of you because this is your portfolio app. Where do we get a picture of you? Guess what? On our home page, we have a picture of you. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to save it to the computer if you don't have a picture of yourself. I'm going to save it to the desktop just so I can access it for now. Actually, I actually have classes here, so let's save it in the right place. App Game Design 1 in my first grading term, and I'm going to save it there. So now back over here for my icon, I'm going to upload that. And I put it in there, App Game Design 1, first grading term, and there's my picture. So again, this icon is going to show up whenever it's installed on someone's device. By opening screen, let's say I want to zoom in. Screen orientation doesn't matter for me. Well, I, I could, let's make it portrait, why not? If I wanted it to be landscape, I could do that. But I want mine to be portrait for now. Scrollable, I'm going to leave off. The web viewer is going to take up most of the screen. And then here you can see it says title, and that's the reason it says screen one here is because inside our title property it says screen one. I'm going to change this to Jamie Gantz app slash game design one portfolio. And you can see that shows up there. <coughs> so again, if I'm matching my guide, you can see I have that there. Then kind of planning this out, we're going to do our navigation bar first. Then we're going to do this area here. Then we're going to do the web viewer. And at the bottom, we're going to do our footer. So to do our navigation bar, if we look at it, remember in App Inventor, well, this is six buttons. I can see the six buttons here. BTN Home, My Apps, BTN My Projects, BTN My Files, BTN Reflections, BTN Substitute, all these things. So here, I can drag these buttons in. But when I try to drag them next to each other, they don't. Remember, you have to use components, pull components out that you want to use inside your app. If I want to align them in App Inventor, there's a layout tab underneath the palette, and you can see there's a horizontal arrangement. If I look at my cheat that I gave you, you can see I have a horizontal arrangement, and then I have these buttons. So I'm going to drag my horizontal arrangement out. The horizontal arrangement is going to go all the way across the screen. In order to go all the way across the screen, I'm going to change my width to fill parent. When I do that, that means fill the parent. But if you look at, this is a part of that, screen one. So fill parent means fill the screen for the width. No matter what size your phone, your tablet, it's going to go all the way across the screen. So now I can put this inside of there and this inside of there. And you can see it's starting. It's going to be horizontally aligned because we did that. We have six buttons that are equally spaced. Well, let's look at that. Let's do BTN Home, BTN My Apps. I'm going to rename them. BTN Home, and this is BTN My Apps. So I want these to be equally spaced. All the buttons I put inside of this horizontal arrangement. In order to do that, I can actually share the space and split them up equally. 
So how do we do that? I'm going to click on this button and for width I can estimate how big it is. I could put a hard value in here so let's say 50 and do that. But Then I have to put 50 for everyone and what if the screen is not 50? So you're not going to use pixels. You could use percentage and do the percent divide the 100% divide the number of buttons, but the easier option is to do fill parent. What fill parent does is it takes up the remaining of the remaining space inside of whatever arrangement it's in. So you can see all this empty space over here because I only have two buttons. When I select fill parent for the width, it fills up the rest of the space. And now this is this big, but this is saying I'm going to take up all the rest of the space. Well, if I wanted these to be equal, if this is automatic, which means only be as big as you need to be, you can see the width here is automatic. And it's as big as it needs to be, which if I take, right now it's this big because I have text for button one. But if I take this off, now it's only this big because it only needs to be that big. That's what automatic really means. Be as big as you need to be. Fill parent says take up as much space as possible. So if this is fill parent, and I change this from automatic to fill parent, this is saying I'm important, I want as much space as possible. This is also saying I'm important as well, I want as much space as possible. So it's going to split the space equally. So I click OK and now you can see both of these are split equally. For these, we don't need text because we're going to be using icons. So I'm going to get rid of these. You can see it it's filling equally. I need my icons. The icons, again, are back on the home page. I give you all of them, so I'm going to save these as well. So, I'll save that. I'll save that. I'll save that. And all I'm doing is right-clicking on them, saving as. Save that. Save that. So I have all my icons now. All right, so in here, I can do my icon now for my home. And I can put in my icon for my apps. My apps one, if I'm looking here, is the little phone. So that is, let's see, Chrome Reader, nope, it's that one, settings. So you can see these two are taking up enough space, but I don't want them to be that big. If you look at most apps, they're really small for your navigation bar. So you can see this here. I could change each one of these to a certain amount of pixels, say 25 or 35. But this is a part of this horizontal arrangement. So versus changing each individual one to a certain number, I'm simply going to change the height of the horizontal arrangement. Let's make it 35 pixels. So when I made it 35 pixels, it's saying everything inside of here is going to be 35. But now these are a problem because it's saying the height is actually automatic, which means it needs to be bigger than 35. If I wanted to fix that, I can simply change my height not to be automatic, but fill parent. Fill parent in this instance, this is the parent. The horizontal arrangement is 35, so if I do fill parent, it changes it to 35. Also, I can do fill parent here does the exact same thing. It's only going to be as big as this parent. The parent is the horizontal arrangement. This is cool if I have eight buttons. I don't have to change eight buttons height anymore. If I wanted to change this to 50, I can change it to 50 and everything in there because these are fill parent are going to fill to be whatever the height is of that. I'm going to change it back to 35. So we have our two buttons. Height is going to be 35 because they're doing fill parent. These buttons are now 
both 50% because they're saying I'm both equally important. Let's add our other buttons in. I'm going to add two more. One and two. Let's see what they were called. One is BTM My Portfolio, one is BTM My Files. So here, I'm going to rename BTN My Portfolio. This is going to be BTN My Files. Here, just like we did for these, you can see these are smaller now because these are saying I need to be this big. This is saying I need to be this big. So these two are saying, okay, we'll split up the rest of the space. If I take this one, let me get rid of the text of it. I'm going to make it that portfolio image, which was this. You can see there, I can fix the height by doing fill parent. This is still being kind of big. I can fix the width by doing fill parent. Now if you notice, these three are equal because they're all saying we want to split the rest of the remaining empty space. This is still as big as it needs to be. So what do you think will happen when I change this? If I have four things and all of their widths are field parent, each one will take up 25% of the space. So let's do that. If I change this to field parent, you can see now they're all equal. I'll change the height also to field parent. I'll get rid of my text. Then I'll make my image the third icon. And the third icon is my files. Which is this one. So you can see, now I have four things that are equally spaced. Let's finish it off with our last two. One and two. Both of these, let's rename them. BTN Reflections, BTN Substitute. So here I have BTN Reflections. And I have BTN Substitute. Again, for this one, both the height and the width is fill parent. Let me get rid of the text. And I'll make the icon, the icon that we have, which is the person kind of talking, that one. So these five are splitting the space equally, but this one is still saying I need to be this big. Let's fix that. Fill parent for the height fill parent for the width. Now all these are equally spaced because they're all saying we want to take up as much space as possible. If all six things are saying that, it splits the space evenly between them. And the last one is the page icon. It's that one. So with that, we have our horizontal navigation bar that matches this. And again, if you look at it here, it's going to give me the cheat. So the next part we're going to do is this area. This area is a little bit tricky. This area is embedding two arrangements. So I want a picture on my left, but then I want text on top and a button on bottom. So let's look at what's happening here. I have a horizontal arrangement that allows this image to be on the right left side and this stuff to be on the right side. But inside of this horizontal arrangement I have a vertical arrangement that allows this text to be on top and this button to be here. So if, if we try to do that, I need a horizontal arrangement first. So I'm going to go to layout. I'm going to go to horizontal arrangement. It goes all the way across the screen so the width of it is going to be fill parent. Then I want to put in my button for myself. I'm going to put a button inside of there. I'm going to rename it. You can see it here, BTN Selfie. The height 
and the width of this is going to be 50 pixels. And the image is going to be the image of myself. But remember, we already uploaded an image of ourself in the icon. So if I click on image, you can see it's right there. And my image is there. Super easy, nothing new here. But look at this, we have a label and a button. You can see here a label and a button. So let's try to add that, but I want it on top and bottom. So I'm going to add my label in. LBL class. And you can see it from here, it says app and game design one. So app and game design one. I can customize how this however I want. Let's say I wanted it red. And I wanted the text yellow. And bold and italics. And let's say I wanted it 18. And I wanted this to go all the way across the screen so I could change this to fill parent. And I want to center that. So I have my label. I want to put a button underneath that. Just kind of like this here. So let's drag our button. So what you can see, I can't, when I loose it, it does not go underneath that. It goes next to it. Why does it go next to it? We're inside of a horizontal arrangement. If I want something to go on top and bottom, I need a vertical arrangement. So if we look at this again, I have a horizontal arrangement, which is all of this. And then I have my button selfie, which is this. This black area is actually this vertical arrangement that allows me to put the label on top of the button. So let's go ahead and customize this button. It says welcome message. And I can make it whatever, let's say yellow and rounded and italics. Make this one italics. I'll take this italics off, right? But I want this to kind of go underneath. And no matter what I do, I can't make it go underneath. That's because you need a vertical arrangement to do that. So I'm going to drag a vertical arrangement inside of here. Now it's next to all of these guys. But I can put this inside of there and drag this inside of there. And now they're on top of each other. If I want the vertical arrangement to go all the way across, and click on that, change my width to fill parent. You could see it goes all the way across. I want this button kind of centered, kind of like that. Again, that's the property from my vertical arrangement. See a line horizontal? I can change that to center here. And if I wanted my background color to be black, I can make it black. Why not? So, kind of tricky here. We're doing a horizontal arrangement. We have a button, but then we have a vertical arrangement inside of here. That way we can put the label on top of the button. Last two parts, really simple to design. You can see here is a new component. It's called a web viewer. Web viewer, again, is just like putting Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer inside of your app. That way no one has to leave your app to go to the Internet. They can do everything inside of it. So we're going to add a web viewer. You can see it. It's right here and another horizontal arrangement at the bottom with two buttons, BTN Gantech and BTN Doral. So come back here. Web browser is inside of user interface. That's the last component right here. You can drag it in. If I wanted more information on it, you can see I can actually click on this. It gives me information about it, but I also can click on more information to go right to the App Inventor interface that gives you all the information you need about the web viewer. So we add in our web viewer. The web viewer automatically takes up all of the space. Unless if my screen one, when we set this up, I did not select scrollable. When I do, look at what happens. The web viewer becomes very small. Because if the screen is scrollable, it can't take up the, the rest of the screen because the screen goes on forever. So whenever you're using a web viewer, on the screen, you don't want to make the screen scrollable, and then you can see the web viewer will take up the rest of the page. So we're almost done with design, very bottom. You can see here, 
I need another horizontal arrangement with two buttons inside of it that are equally spaced. I'm going to give you part of it. I'm going to let you finish the last part of it. So I need my horizontal arrangement. I'm going to put that inside of there. I'll do fill parent. I'll make this the same height as the top, 35 pixels. Now I'm going to leave it to you to complete the rest of this design. You should have a button BTN Gantech, a button BTN Reagan Doral with these images. And I gave you the images again here. We saved them to the, comp the computer. Complete this design part and you're done with the design. <coughs> There's two other components you need. However, if you look down here in the non-visible, you need text-to-speech and you need a player. Text-to-speech and player are underneath media. So I have my player here. I'm going to drag it in. I have text-to-speech here. I'm going to drag it in. And now I have my components here. And you can see also I have my components here. Again, you have to complete this part of it. It should look like this. You should know how to do that from what I've shown in this video already. Complete that, then watch the next video on how to code this app.